This video is going to show you how you can replace the default Dynamics 365 help functionality, which is useless for your end users, with a context sensitive training and support mechanism, which your users can appreciate and in turn will help increase user adoption while reducing frustration and support tickets. In a non-altered Dynamics 365 environment, such as this sales hub, here's what you get as a user when you click on the question mark. You get to the Microsoft Dynamics 365 documentation page, and then you're expected to find the information that you need. So if you're in sales, you go into documentation, and then you're actually looking and hunting and pecking for information. We all know that a user is not going to go through all that. Now, the best scenario would be that the person gets here, they start doing a search, for example, create a view. How do I do that? Even that's not going to happen most times, but if it does happen, look at this, the answers are all over the place. And it's not really answering the question which I asked as a user, which is how do I create a view? The better option is to convert this question mark into a different mechanism altogether. There's a mechanism called custom help panes and guided tasks. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works. You need to have admin rights, obviously, within Dynamics. You go to the gear icon, go to advanced settings. At advanced settings, click on the settings drop down, go to administration. From there, system settings. And in here, you want to go down to where it says enable custom help panes and guided tasks. And you set that to yes. Initially, this was set to no, I had changed it to yes. And then you click on OK. And that's about it. Sometimes it can take up to 10 minutes for it to take effect. And the way you'll know that it has taken effect is when you go back to any entity or table page and you click on the question mark and you get something like this. Now, before I jump into showing you exactly how you can edit this custom help pane, I'm going to show you what it could look like when you're done. So I have a different page open over here, accounts. And in this case, if I click on the question mark, now it's showing me account based specific information. Notice that it's starting with some guidance. Then it has a YouTube video that is showing me. And then it has particular links. Now these links, if I click on create a new account, for example, brings up what's called a coach mark here. If I click on create a new view of accounts, that's actually bringing up a balloon, like a walkthrough balloon. Now, if I click on other things like work with accounts and contacts, this is a link that's going to docs.microsoft.com and showing me how to work with accounts and contacts. So you can do all these different things when you edit the custom help pane. Let's look at how you get started. Now, keep in mind, because I'm in accounts right now, it's showing me the custom help pane, which is specific to account. When I go to leads, now it's showing me the custom help pane that's for leads. So this is all context sensitive. It has context sensitivity at the application, the table, which is the entity, the form, and also at the language level. To start editing, once again, you need to be an admin. You simply go in here and click on edit. Now, depending on where you are, you may or may not have any starting content. I do have some content because in Dynamics 365, there are most of these specific applications and pages do have something that Microsoft has provided us to begin with. I'll click on edit. And now this is a section which is currently labeled as undefined. Not sure why they left it like that, but if I wanted to, I click on edit section and name it something to be whatever I want it to be. For example, resources, collapse by default or not, up to you. So that's a section. You don't have to put things in sections. You can just go ahead and put things right here, free form, or you can put them in sections which can be collapsed and expanded. Let's look at the type of content you can put in. So you got the numbered list, bulleted list, link, balloon, like I said, walkthroughs, coach marks, inline help icons, basically, sections you can create, images you can insert, and also you can insert videos. I'll give a few examples to get you started. Now, instead of typing from scratch, let me just show you some content I have in Microsoft Word. I'm going to take this. Note that it has formatting here currently. If I copy this thing, right click copy and then paste it over here. Notice what happens. I'm just going to do a regular paste, but none of the formatting gets carried over. 
Once again, check this out. So this was how it was to begin with, and this is how it got carried over. Even the numbers over here are just text. It's not actual numbered list. So you gotta be careful. You wanna delete all that over here. Now I can change some of the formatting. So I can go ahead and say this one is bold. And then this one here is a numbered list. You could do some of that stuff here. And as you can see that these are the few different text formatting options you have. Bold, italics, you got strike through, subscript, uh, superscript, underline. This one is, you can make this into a code snippet if you wanted to. Okay, so keep that in mind. None of the formatting will come through. You'll have to do it yourself here. Now let's say I wanna make a section. So I'll click on insert section. It's gonna ask me what the section is gonna be called. I'll call it leads management. And this time I'll go ahead and say collapse by default. So you can see that when I insert over here, it's gonna appear like this for my users. Now inside the section, I can go ahead and put wherever I want in here. So if I put a link in here, I'm gonna say qualify and convert leads. Okay, and I'll go ahead and put the link to that right there. Now I can open it up in a new window, which I would recommend here, or it's just gonna take the current page and it's going to transfer to that other page, which I would not recommend. So I'm gonna click on that, click on insert. Now here's my link, right? Let me save this. Now here's what I got. It's collapsed by default. I go in here, click on qualify and convert leads. So it took me in a different tab to that qualify and convert leads to opportunity article at docs.microsoft.com site. Back in the custom help panes again, we'll click on edit. Okay, once again, I'm gonna go into this section. This time I'll actually put in a coach mark. Now this is a coach mark, which means it's going to point out a specific functionality when that particular coach mark link is clicked. So in this case, I'll say, insert a coach mark, I'm gonna drag this to new. So I'm dragging it to an element on the page. I want this new button to be pointed to. The link text is going to say, create a new lead. I'll click on insert. So here we go. Now I cannot preview it. There is no way to preview it. So I have to click on save, but keep in mind that if I do click on save, my other users will see it immediately. So be careful. I'll click on save expand this, click on create a new lead. And here we go. Here's a coach mark that appears by new and it's pulsating. Let me do another example. Now in this case, I want people to be able to create a new view. And I know the view is all the way buried in here. So I want to point to this and tell them that they can click on the ellipses and click on create view. To be able to do that, I need to use what's called a balloon or also a walkthrough step. So I'll go into edit, and then from here, same thing, I'll go into this section. Now in this section, I'll click on insert balloon. The element I'm going to select is going to be this ellipses right here. And then the link text is going to be what's gonna show up in the actual custom help pane. For the link text, I'll put in learn to create a view. And then for the title, we'll go with create a new view. Now the title is gonna be what's gonna show up on the balloon that shows up here. Same thing with details, it's also gonna show up on the balloon. So we want this to be very specific to what the users need to follow. Okay, here we go. So I put in create a new view and click on the ellipsis, then click on create view, because that's what it is right here, create view. Now let's see what it looks like. So I'll click on insert. Here's my learn to create a view link. I'll click on save. Once again, I have to save it to be able to see it. The section is collapsed by default. I'll go in it as a user. Click on learn to create a view. Here's my balloon pointing to the ellipses, telling me to click on the ellipses, then click on create view. So that's how balloons work or walk through steps to show me exactly where to click along with instructions. Let's do a couple more examples. I'm gonna click on edit once again over here and then I'll go ahead and insert an image right there. So the way that is done is by clicking on insert image. This image has to be hosted somewhere already. You have to provide that URL and then provide the title and optionally, but preferably the alt text as well. Okay, so I'm gonna be inserting the image URL for Contoso logo. So that's what I put in here for title and alt text. And now let me grab the image URL. I'm going to go to image URL, do a control V to paste it in there. 
It's a JPEG image in this case. Other image types like PNG and others work too. Click on insert and here's my image. Could be smaller, might be better, but you get the picture. You get the actual image and then you have the information. Now it's providing me a scroll bar. So once again, a good reason to have a smaller picture would be preferable. In fact, I don't need this stuff over here either. So I can go ahead and take this out if I wanted to. There is a header right here, so I can put in leads list. And now this information is actually going to get transferred right there. You'll see when I click on save, here we go. That's the heading. Here's the image and here's the information that I've been putting in over here. Okay. We'll do one more thing here. I'm going to go ahead and add a video. So for this thing, I'll go ahead and actually go into my collapsed section and I'll put in a video here. Once again, I'll click on the ellipses here, click on insert video, same thing. The video has to exist somewhere and then you go ahead and provide the URL for it and other information. Okay. I have a video URL on hand. So I'm going to do a control V here and here it is coming from YouTube in this case, others like Vimeo and other popular video sites are also supported. I'll leave the other options, uh, which are self-explanatory empty for now and allow full screen, click on insert. And here it is very quickly, very easily. Now it's showing me the thumbnail that's coming from YouTube. Click on save. And if I go down now, leads management, here's my video leads versus contact. And I'm going to go ahead and full screen. Here it is. It's showing me the full screen here as well. Works pretty well directly within the custom help pane. So these were the quick edits that you can do within the custom help pane. Hopefully this was helpful. Now keep in mind that I just did that for the leads list. Now I'll navigate to a specific lead. Now the custom help pane is still there, but it's not for the lead. I'm going to click on X, click on the question mark again. It shows me a different custom pane, right? So this one is specific to the leads forms page. The same exact thing is going to be true. If I go to a different entity like opportunities, now here I have something built out. So if I click on the question mark, it does show a few things here that I had built out earlier. If I go into a specific opportunity, we'll go into all opportunities, go into a specific one. Then I'll click on the question mark. Now it's showing me different records because that's for the opportunity form page. You get each custom help pane for a form. You get it for the table also known as the entity. So this, view here, you get it also for each application. So if I go from sales hub to a different application that would have different custom help panes over there and also for each language. So if I'm using English and someone is in French, you would get a different custom help pane for each person, depending on their browser language. Now all this stuff is good, but there are definitely some limitations to this functionality as well. And it's good to understand the limitations of all this before you jump into it. So let's talk about those. Let's talk about the formatting and customizations first. So the text here cannot be formatted much. There are some formatting options, which I showed you earlier where you can bold and other kind of stuff, but not as much. Now in regards to the links that pop up a coach mark like this one, for example, there's no way to brand this and the same thing. There's balloons. You cannot brand or customize, choose colors, anything like that. All these things are not possible for these things. In regards to the balloons functionality, it's just a one step walkthrough. There is no multiple sequential steps you can make just one step, which is executed from clicking on that link below. As I mentioned earlier, also when you click on the save, so you're an edit, you click on save immediately. Everything gets saved and exposed to your users. There is no draft functionality. Everything is published immediately. The images and videos that you embed in this help pane have to be hosted somewhere. Now that could be internal to you or it can be external, but there is no functionality to upload. It has to already be hosted and then you supply the URL for it to appear in the custom help pane. There's also no way to security trim or target specific links. So for example, I can't say that a couple of these links are only for sales managers while the other ones are for sales people. 
there is no way to target that. Everybody sees everything. You will also find many times that when you're editing and putting coach marks up, there will be places where it will just not find the actual interface. Meaning, okay, let me try this. I'll put a coach mark on contacts, okay? And I'll say contacts here just to test it out. All right, save, here's the contacts. Once it's saved, I try to click on the contacts, but nothing is happening. So it did not recognize that element, even though I selected it. And that is the case for many situations. Unfortunately, that is a limitation where it does work in some places and does not in other places. There's also no support for this functionality officially from Microsoft. You're on your own when you're doing this. So you can't just go to the Dynamics support team to get help for that. They'll support you for the Dynamics interface, but not for the custom help panes. Please remember that. So what I've shown you is good functionality to start with, but it's still 0.5 version of this functionality. And Microsoft has not really provided any guidance as to what the roadmap looks like, or even if they will be expanding this thing or not altogether. Now we, as a company, Visual SP, if you go to visualsp.com, you'll find that we also have a product, which is Visual SP for Dynamics 365. And that does many of these things that I've shown you with these coach marks and walkthroughs and, and a whole lot more, much, much, much deeper. So it's uh, 50 times, 100 times deeper than what I've just shown you that Microsoft provides. So if you're pretty serious and you wanna get deeper into this functionality and providing contextual experiences, let us know and we can do a private demo session for you and your team to show you how Visual SP can help you with your business goals. Thanks for watching.